Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another week. It is tag time. That's right. Glad you're taking this time to get with us at Tag so we can find out more about who God is, what he wants from us, how he uh, has blessed us to live our lives, and the interaction that God wants to have with us. Believe it or not, God, the creator of the universe, wants to interact with you and me on a daily level. He wants to be involved in our lives. And so what we do when we get together is study his word. We learn a little bit more about the Bible and what he tells us in the Bible so that we can find out how he wants us to live. Just like we go to school, we learn about math or we learn about science. We learn about those things so that we can have that information and we can live our lives well accordingly. So we also need to do the same thing with the Bible. We want to study the Bible. We want to learn more about what God's word says because math may cease. Math one day will no longer be needed, but God's word is not going anywhere. It's always going to be true. So welcome back. If you've been here before, welcome for the first time. If this is your first time, I'm Pastor Carol. And again, in our tag time, we're going to talk about the word this time. It's March. And so we're celebrating uh, St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is coming up this week. Actually, I believe it's on the 17th, somewhere around there. Uh, and so we're going to celebrate that. We want to talk about that like we normally do. We look at the holidays and cultural things that are going on. We find out, should I be engaged in that as a believer? Should I participate or should I abstain? Should I stay away or should I not have anything to do with that? That's what we're going to talk about. Before we get into it, before I forget, if you don't forget to text the number, text our word tag T-A-G-G to the phone number so that you can be on the list and you can get any kind of updates reminders and stuff like that for me. I don't send out very many throughout the week, but sometimes just want to be able to encourage you. Also going to send out the link to the videos and things like that so that you can have it nice and close in a place there. It'll come directly to your cell phone. If you have one, you can use your parents' phone with their permission. If you need to do it that way, it's 713-903-8533. All right. So text the word tag, T-A-G-G to 713 713- 903-8533 and you'll be on the list. Appreciate it. Also, don't forget if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe or maybe leave a comment because it actually helps the channel grow be able to help us reach more people. So we watch our, we have our uh, youth videos on here. We have our children's ministry videos on here. We have our full church videos on here and the more activity we can get for the channel, the more it'll grow. We can appreciate that. So not only you can be blessed by it, other people can too. So for today, like I said, we're going to talk about St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is a day that we celebrate. It comes around once a year. There's lots of different things that people do to celebrate it. Uh, It's typically considered uh, an Irish celebration. They uh, turn rivers and stuff green. They put a bunch of green lights up. A lot of people do different things to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Some we can do and some we can't. Wink, wink, nod, nod. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. So we don't do all the celebrations of St. Patrick's Day, but we want to look at where St. Patrick's Day comes from, if we should have anything to do with celebrating St. Patrick. And the first clue to whether or not we should have anything to do with St. Patrick, or the first clue in how we should feel about celebrating St. Patrick's Day, is the first word, saint. St. Patrick's Day is about the celebration of a saint, a believer, a Christian. And so we want to look at who this person was, his impact on us and on the world. Again, finding out, is this something that we should do? So for this, we're going to have a quick history lesson. And then we're going to get into the Bible and find out about how this interacts or interjects with the Word of God. So the short story about St. Patrick is that he was a teenager, around 16 years of age. Not 100% sure how old he was. They're pretty sure he was a teenager. They don't know exactly when he was born because they didn't go to hospitals and have birth certificates. Somewhere in his teenage years, uh, his homeland, he was in Britain and he was a Roman citizen, but some Irish raiders came and they raided their area and they took him. They accosted him. Just like today, we have modern day slavery and they talk about how young people are taken and, and abducted and sold or uh, put into, you know, terrible, precarious positions. Same thing was going on then. There were some Irish raiders that came and they took him from his home. They took him from his home in Britain, took him back to Ireland, and they sold him and put him into slavery. 
just like some stories we read in the Bible, just like some stories you can you can actually read this day, things that's going on. And of course, we know about slavery in our country. So uh, he was pulled into slavery. He's before that he was raised and brought up as a Christian. His dad had a position in the church. I don't know how into church they were. I don't know what that meant back in that day per se. It was in the early uh, it was in the early to mid 400s when this stuff was going on. 400 AD. So he gets abducted, he gets taken to Ireland, and he lived in Ireland as a slave, working as a like a shepherd or a farmer for like six years. After six years, uh, he had enough. He took an opportunity to travel like 200 miles to get to the coast of Ireland, where he was able to get on a ship and be able to return home. And there are some difficulties in his life and in his story. Again, this is the Cliff Notes really fast version. He ends up finding his way back home around 22 Sometime after he got back home, he believes that he had a vision or a dream from God in which uh, different versions say different things. But one, a few that I've seen said he had a dream where the children of Ireland were calling out to him and they were singing and they were asking him to come back to Ireland and teach them the gospel. So he had a, a dream that he was supposed to go back to this place where the only thing he had known about them was his slavery and his captivity. And he believed that the, the, the God wanted him to go there and preach the gospel. And so he actually did it. He went back to Ireland, the place of the people who snatched him and enslaved him. He went to that place and he began to teach the gospel to people all over the place. Uh, there's lots of different stories. You know, a lot of it can't be verified because of uh, information back in that time. But he did help bring the gospel to uh, that, that nation, island of uh, Ireland. He did a lot to bring the people of Ireland uh, to God and to to uh, to teach them about God's word and to evangelize that area. And so, yes, we definitely want to celebrate St. Patrick because of what he did, what he overcame and how he lived his life. And we're going to get some lessons from that this week, next week, maybe the week after that. I'm wearing green because we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day. And so we're going to keep it going through the month of March. So we want to find out how does the story of St. Patrick and Saint celebrating St. Patrick's Day in 2021 have anything to do with the Word of God in our lives as believers? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. You get a gold star for the day for asking such a great question. Now, before we get into the Bible part, don't forget, we still have our services live over at Burke's Elementary School. So if you can get to service, come to service. I would love to see you. I'd love to say what's up. would love to be able to smack you in the back of the head and just see what's going on with you. Hope all is well. Would love to see you soon. But don't forget, leave comments. That lets me know that you're around. And you can also make sure that you sign up for our information text messages. All right, so we see that even though uh, even though Patrick had a, a crazy beginning to his life, uh, his life didn't end up the way that it started. There were decisions that he decided to make because he was in control of his life. And I want you to know that you're in control of your life. There may be aspects and things about your life that you don't like. There might be things going on in your culture that you don't like. But those things don't have to shape who you are. Those things don't have to decide and determine who you are as evidenced by the life of St. Patrick and also evidenced by what we're going to see in the Word. I want to take your attention to James chapter 4. And we're going to look at a, a single verse there, James chapter 4. So I want you to turn there. You can tap there. You can swipe there. Do whatever you have to do to get to the Bible in James chapter 4. They're interesting things. So this week's title is Bitter or Better. We want to talk about being bitter or being better. Because whether or not we like it, we have a decision to make based on our life experiences of whether or not we're going to be bitter about those things or if we're going to get better and allow those things to make our lives better. We can use negative experiences in our lives to live our lives in a better way. No, we don't, we're not asking for bad things to happen to us. We're not wanting negative things to happen, but negative things are going to happen because that's a part of life. That's life in this world because we have an enemy out there who's Satan, who's trying to trick and deceive and cause bad things to happen in our lives. Things are going to happen, whether purposefully by others. Sometimes we make bad decisions. There's all kinds of reasons why negative things can happen in life. The question is not if negative things will happen, the question is how we will allow them 
to be used by us in the rest of our lives? Will we allow those negative things to make us bitter or will we use those negative things to live a better life? And I hope that you will choose to use a better life. Whether you've already experienced some of those negative things or whether there are negative things coming up in your future, I want you to remember they don't determine who you are and negative experiences don't determine how you have to respond to those experiences. But want to look at one of the things that Patrick did in his bad situation. So over in James chapter four, verse eight, we don't, I don't know if he did this purposefully knowing this scripture. I don't know if, uh, if they had you service back then and he was actually paying attention when he was supposed to be hearing the word. I don't know, but I know he found himself as a teenager in a situation that nobody ever wants to be in, which is in slavery away from his homeland around people that he did not know. And obviously people that did not want to take care of him. Well, as the story goes, after he was taken as a teenager, he began to turn to his faith. He actually was taken and put in a terrible situation and he didn't turn away from God, but he turned to God. So many times when we get in tough situations, we like to run away from God. Like if if you uh, are able to see or, or know this about some adults, even today, some adults will get into bad situations or messed up things in their lives and They'll stop going to church. They'll stop reading their Bible. They'll stop. They'll stop praying sometimes because their attention is just taken away. Other times because they're mad about God. But whatever the the reason, the result is the same. They're going away. They're turning away from God. And it's very, very difficult for God to help us when we turn our backs to him. But Patrick didn't do that. When he was taken, he turned to God. He actually dove into God his religion, into his belief in God, into his wanting to draw closer to God, which is what we're going to see in James chapter four. What happens when we draw, we go closer to God instead of away from God. If I get close, then I can see in a different way and you can see me in a different way. So we can either get closer to God and get closer to the source, or we might decide that we're going to be far, far away from the source. We might go so far away from the source that it's like we just disappear and we're not even on the scene anymore. But no, 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 don't do that. Draw close to God according to what it says here in James chapter four. Look at verse number eight. It says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Really focusing on the first half of the verse, draw nigh. That means get close. Back in the day, they had a well and they would draw some well water. They would put the thing down there. And they would, you know, bring it up. Drawing is is bringing something. And nigh, that word nigh means near. So he's saying get near to God and he will get near to you. So that means every step that you take closer to God, he's taking like a step or he's taking uh, space to get closer to you. He doesn't stay way over there and expect us to walk all the way. As we get closer, he gets closer. As we get closer, he gets closer and we can do that all of our lives and to the point where God is God is always with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. But the closeness of our relationship is up for debate and we can be so close to God that he'll be with us like a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He can be so close to us and he'll always be there taking care of us. He'll be hearing us, helping us through difficult times and difficult situations. So remember this, whether you have a a situation that you're dealing with now or whether it comes up later, especially when situations are bad, but it really doesn't matter if things are bad or good, draw nigh to him and he'll draw nigh unto you. I believe that's one of the things that helped Patrick be able to get through uh, his captivity. And of course, it's set up later for him to be able to hear God's word. There's another scripture that I want to look at that it's close. It's one book back, one book to the left. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. You know, Hebrews, great iced tea when you're talking about me. Of course, I don't do it much anymore because I usually buy it now. But in Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to look at another couple verses really quickly and then we're out of here. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God 
lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and, and thereby many be defiled. If bitterness is in us because of some event or what somebody said to us or what somebody did to us or what we feel like these people think about us, if we allow bitterness to be on the inside of us, it'll spring up, it'll grow and get bigger, and many will be defiled. We will defile many because of the bitterness that's in us. So instead of allowing that bitterness to spring up, the Bible says that we should follow peace with all men. That's what I'm trying to do every day in my life. That's what I encourage you to do. Don't be bitter, get better. And that's what we're looking at for St. Patrick's Day. I'm out of here. We'll see you next time. Tag, you're it.